So this video is going to introduce the very basic and foundational concepts in this course. The idea of symbols, alphabets, strings and languages. The only thing you need to remember coming into this video is what the definition of a set is. So, what is a symbol? For this course, a symbol can really be anything. It's the base unit for which we build up everything else that we talk about in this course. And we can often refer to them as characters because quite often the most common thing we use for a symbol are single character elements, such as lowercase or uppercase letters, digits, uh, non-alphanumeric characters, etc. They can also be represented by whole words if we're talking about something like uh, TCP IP protocols or something like that. But it's important to remember that in the context of this course, a sim symbol is a single indivisible quantity. So an alphabet is just a finite set of symbols. So a few of examples of these might be the set of all um, alphabetic characters, lower and uppercase. Or it might be the set of characters that we need, symbols that we need to represent decimal numbers. So the digits 0 through 9 and the decimal point. Or, as we discussed before, we might have these single indivisible symbol quantities, listen, sent and closing, which may form an alphabet of three symbols. Now, what's important is that if we have any finite set by this definition, we could consider the elements in that set to be symbols. So really, while we say an alphabet is a finite set of symbols, it's really just any finite set where we've decided that the elements in it are going to be symbols for our purpose. Whenever we do have a, such a finite set of symbols, which we call an alphabet, we typically represent that set by the uppercase Greek letter sigma. So whenever you see in this course, sigma, we don't mean a sum generally, we may use it in that context, but almost always we mean an alphabet. So now we're getting into the meat of the course, what strings are. Strings are just a finite sequence of symbols from an alphabet. So if we're talking about the alphabet of alphanumeric characters, then any of these individual words could be a string. Or if we're talking about alphanumeric characters, including the space in an alphabet, then this whole sentence here could be a string. We often denote it using S or W, sometimes with subscripts. And a string can be empty. That is, even with a particular alphabet, like any of the two that we've got down here, we can consider this string, which contains no symbols. And we call that string the empty string. And you'll hear, hear that phrase over and over and over in this course, the empty string. And we denote that using the Greek letter epsilon. Now, a few examples here of what strings, uh, some valid strings from two different alphabets. So in this case, on the left, our alphabet considers of the numeric characters that we need to form um, decimal numbers. And any of these individual lines here represents a valid string. So we could have a string consisting of just one symbol, or we could even have the empty string as we talked about before. We could have the string 1.2, the string 0.99, this convoluted string that looks more like a weird IP address that's improperly formatted with three decimal points. Or we could even have the string just a re uh, recurring sequence of uh, decimal points. Now in the right, here we've got a, a, an alphabet that we built up using some more complicated symbols. But remember that each of these individual things is one symbol, an indivisible quantity, not the individual letters within those words. So really the strings that we could build up from this alphabet are things like listen, 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 closing, sent, sent, listen, closing, etc. Now it's important to remember that a string is always a finite sequence in this course. We never talk about an infinite sequence of A's as a string. So I want to talk about all the possible strings. 
So when we've got an alphabet, that alphabet is a finite set, set of symbols, and we can make strings from that alphabet, which themselves are finite sequences of the, any of those symbols. So the set of all possible strings, which we will donate, donate using, denote, sorry, using sigma with a star asterisk power, and you'll learn about what that operator is later, but it's the clean star. This set of all possible strings from the alphabet sigma consists of the empty string, all of the possible strings of length one, so strings that have only one symbol, all of the strings of length two, so all the strings starting with that only have two characters starting with ones, starting with twos, and so on up to those starting with the decimal point, the strings of length three and onwards. Now remember that a string is always a finite length, but this set of all possible strings is actually infinite because we can always continue to build up a new finite length string from an older finite length string just by tacking on an extra symbol. But all of the elements that are in sigma star themselves have only finite length. This will make a lot more sense to you later when we discuss the clean star operator. So now we get into the most important concept in this course, languages. A language is just a subset of the possible strings that can be built from an alphabet. So we talked before about what we meant by sigma clean star as the set of all possible strings. A language is just any subset of that, including sigma star, is that is a language itself. The language may be empty, which we represent using the empty set symbol. It may be finite in size, so it may only have a finite number of strings, or it may be infinite like sigma star was, where there's an infinite number of finite length strings. So given this alphabet here, which is the one we've talked about a few times before, this set, uh, sets of valid strings each form languages. So we might have this first language, which is just this set of four strings, which can be built up using a one. So this is a finite length, finite language of strings from this alphabet here, but it doesn't actually include all of the possible symbols. Or we might have the set of valid integers. So anything we can build up without using the decimal point. We might also have the set of the valid real numbers. So those we can build up where there can be only one decimal point somewhere in the number, but not multiple. Or we might have a subset of that, which might be the set of values that can actually be taken on by an IEEE floating point representation. And you know that not all real numbers can be represented that way. So languages can be subsets of other languages. So in this case here, L4 was a subset of L3. Over here, we've got a different alphabet, which is just the lower and uppercase letters. So we might have a simple language that consists of just one symbol, which in this case is one string consisting of one symbol. We might have a set of all of the length two strings. We might have a set that consists of all of the valid English words. Or we might have another set, which is a subset of L3, which is the language consisting of all of the one syllable words, such as cup or cat. Now, it's important to note that a language is just a set in the same way that an alphabet is just a set. So all of the usual set operations that you've learnt before coming to this class still apply to languages, so things like union, intersection, etc. So what you should take away from this video is the definition of a symbol, an alphabet, a string, and a language. 